So it's been a while since I've been sharing my photography journey online. And with that, I've been studying a lot of other photographers' work. I've been traveling, learning and sharing all my experience. So today I thought I could make a video with some advice as to how you can develop your own creative voice in photography. And I do have to say that, of course, this is not a science. It's not a matter of fact thing. Some things might work for you, some things might not work for you. It, there's no specific set of rules that will guarantee you like a result. I feel like it's all um, a question of time and effort. And of course, focusing on your path, look at other people, but take inspiration from their examples. And with that, focus on your own path and don't compare yourself. So this is this, the things that I wanted to say as brief notes before we go into the video. And one of the first tips I want to talk about is organizing your photography. I believe it's essential for us to gain a certain idea of where we are with our photography, to look at what we've been doing in order to understand what's our wants and needs with our photography, what our goals are, what are the themes we like to explore with our photography, which is why I feel that organizing our photography is tied to establishing a baseline for where we are and where we want to be. So what I've done over the years is from time to time print my work or the most recent work I've done and go through it. And this is, of course, an exercise of reflection. I can see what shots I'd still identify with, what subjects, what worked for me and what didn't, what I need to improve on. And of course, from a formal point of view, I also get to see what I can improve in terms of composition, whether I prefer black and white or color, which one is more suitable for my subjects, and overall have a sense of my growth as a photographer over the years. And every time I do this, I feel like I come back to kind of like a, let's say, a safe place where I ask myself, okay, this is what I've been doing, where do I think I can go next? Um, do I feel like in my photos um, they mimic what I want to say with them? Because, of course, you know, when we talk about creative voice in photography, we're talking about the things that we want to say with our photography, the things that we want to explore, the things that we want to focus on. And, you know, obviously it's not like going to be like words. It's not going to have to be there from point A to point B. But roughly we should have an idea of what we want. And so coming back and establish this baseline is kind of like a point to start of over again or a point where we kind of like come and find ourselves again and check in with ourselves. What are we doing and where can we go next? And the second thing that definitely helped me was books. And here I want to talk about photo books but also books that touch on creativity and philosophy behind photography. And I think self-development books are also important for this chapter. And for those of you that are familiar with the channel and with the work I'm doing, you know that I've been doing uh, videos around photo books and I talk about lessons that we can take from those photo books, not just in terms of like formal, formally speaking composition, you know, subjects, lines, but also like you know, in a way, a psychological and emotional or perhaps as well, philosophical side of photography. So for those interested, I'm going to be leaving links to those videos down below, but also leaving links to books that I've picked up that I feel like are very, very important or were important in me figuring, figuring out some things and also, of course, helping me with my photography and realizing what I wanted. Now, this might sound silly or perhaps too obvious, but getting a notebook or sketchbook, honestly, is one of the best things I've done. And I learned that when I was in film school, that was extremely helpful to start a diary, whatever I start a project. And I remember the professor at the time recommended picking up a notebook. And over the years, I've done that with different projects. But I also realized how essential it is to almost journal our photography. And this is valid whether you're working on a specific photo project or simply just going about your days and results. And to be honest with you, you don't need anything expensive. You don't need to pick up, you know, field notes or anything like that. You just need a notebook or some loose pages. And I'm pretty sure someone has, you know, everyone has like one of them around the house. Whether that is an old notebook, just start by doing that kind of like journaling um, for a couple of days. Um, and it's not the, the point is not like to take it out with you, but maybe when you come back from shooting, write down what your thoughts are, what you felt, was there anything that catch your eye? 
Was that anything like, how did you feel? Are you progressing as a photographer as well? Is your workflow okay? Like, do you feel like, is the camera, that camera right for you? What did you experience? I feel like sometimes those things, when we look back and we see the, you know, our path as a photographer, you know, coming around of the years, of the months, I think it's really, really interesting to give you some insight of what you've been doing. And also you can use these kind of like notebooks for, as sketchbooks that you can sketch up, you know, shots that you want to do or things that you're looking for, or maybe like print your photos and then just put it in a book and basically write your thoughts. And I do have an interesting video coming up um, on the importance of sketchbooks as photographers. And I'm going to go through a lot of photographers, different photographers' sketchbooks and see what we can learn from that. And I think it's very interesting. It might be a long one, so it might be only on my website, but I'll think about it. Anyways, let's move on to the next tip. Sharpen your tools. Now, what do I mean by this? I feel like, you know, just like painters, you know, sketch artists, whatever, that sharpen their pencils or they need different inks, they need different, you know, oil paints, whatever it is. They need different materials and they need to sharpen it and make sure that there's a maintenance there. I feel like we as photographers have to do that as well with our tools. And our tools are, of course, our cameras, light meters, you know, our, the accessories that we use. And this is why I said before in the notebook area that I feel like it's important for us to write as well. How do we feel that, you know, is this the right camera for me? Is this the right workflow for me? It's important to reflect on that. And if you're a film photographer, have a think about the different films that you've been using, what works for you and what doesn't. What's the most comfortable to you? What's the format that better translates what you're wanting to say with your photography? And I find that with the type of photography I'm doing, I tend to float more towards medium format. And in this case, before I thought of upgrading my medium format camera, I did spend some time researching what cameras were available, which one fitted my budget, and which one I preferred after trying both SLR and range finders. And of course, we can't ignore the purpose of gear. Gear is a tool that will help us capture the things we see. However, we can't ignore that a photograph also doesn't start or end in a camera. So we shouldn't prioritize gear, but we shouldn't also ignore it. Rather find a common ground where we understand its purpose in our path. And in fact, I do believe that all these things we've been talking about, growth, finding your themes, reflecting on your photography, play a bigger part in finding or developing our creative voice. And over the course of this video, you've been seeing a lot of different shots um, made outside or inside, you know, of different things, over me shooting or a certain scenery, or perhaps like, you know, little details of a landscape or details of books or whatnot. And I want to talk to you now about the lens behind those shots. And the lens I've been using is the Suri 50mm Jupiter Prime Cine lens. And I've been using this lens to capture details of places that I've been to and objects that I've been using. And I have to say, for my videos in particular about books, this lens is exceptional in capturing detail. It's extremely sharp, as we can see by the tests that I've done. And we're talking about a lens with a minimal focus distance of 24mm, which is, in my opinion, really impressive. I also love the way the light is rendered by this lens as it produces a soft contrasted, almost kind of like an easy look that I love, particularly as I pay attention to the edges of the frame. And of course, this is a look I personally love, but talking about soft contrast, I was also very impressed by the color reproduction. And even though most of the footage we've seen, it's been graded, it's important, of course, to capture the basics well when we're filming in terms of exposure, color information, highlights, and shadows. And I've really appreciated the upgrade this lens offered to my workflow and the visuals of my videos. And the price range of these lenses is roughly under $1,000 each. And I think considering the quality, considering what this lens actually is, it's a really good price. And I do have to say that for people that don't have Hollywood budgets, I feel like it's making filmmaking or videography upgrades much more accessible. So I'd like to thank Siri for partnering with me in this video and links to their products will be down below. So you're welcome to check them out. And of course here, this is not a tip really. It's more an incentive. We all know that, you know, it's good to say, oh, come on, go out and go and shoot. But sometimes we don't feel like it. Sometimes our motivation is not the same. Sometimes we're tired because life is exhausting. We have other things to deal with. 
So I just wanted to say, you know, even when you feel at those times like that and you feel like you're down, just go out. You don't necessarily have to take any pictures. Sometimes I do this myself. I don't even take any pictures. Just the thought of going out with my camera shows intent. And I feel like photography, it's kind of like a mix between obviously knowledge, growing your photographic eye, experience, but also effort and consistency. So we can only grow based on these things. And if we show effort and consistency and we push ourselves. So I wanted to, you know, of course, besides all the tips, and I hope that they have been helpful, to incentive you to go out um, with your camera and just, you know, um, have fun and, you know, try and uh, take some photos. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. No pressures. And anyways, this, this has been the end of today's video. I'm going to be leaving links down below um, to the videos that I find that, are, that I've done and that are complementary to this video in particular. Also links to today's sponsor. And I, yeah, I guess that it's been all for today. So thank you for watching, supporting the channel. I appreciate it and I'll see you here for another video soon. So stay safe, keep shooting, film digital, whatever you do, and I'm out. Peace.